laboratory analysis for men that are on testosterone all the way through to anabolic steroids. This is it today. This is what I cover. So many people have asked me to present this and I have to do it comprehensively. There's a lot going on so please blow it up or focus in, slow it down, take notes. But I want to get the whole comprehensive picture out. So this is what I do every day. These are about 90% of the labs I order every single day as an expert taking care of men and testosterone and of course on steroids that are suffering and this is testosteronology. It's internal medicine for men on testosterone. CBC, comprehensive metabolic panel, which includes glucose, liver function, hemoglobin A1C, urinalysis, PSA, and of course, lipid panel. Let's start right back over here for the CBC. This is a complete blood cell panel. It has white cells, it has red cells and platelets. Unless you have thrombocytosis underlying, antigens will not affect white blood cells or platelets. So let's keep moving. You're going to look at the whole effect is you're on testosterone or steroids and it causes increase in red blood cells. I did a video on that. Please check that out. That's a real detailed video. So the upper limit normal and the reference range of hemoglobin and hematocrit is 18 grams per deciliter and 54%. You're going to see different ranges as low as 17 and as low as 48 to 50 on that. But you want to work with a healthcare provider because if you have symptoms, of polycythemic related symptoms, you're going to want to have this personalized. The process of how androgens increase blood blood cells is called androgen induced erythrocytosis. That's right here, and it leads to polycythemia. This is complicated. We certainly don't understand this. I work with experts and hematologists and urologists and cardiologists all over the world that are experts in this. Every man who takes a little testosterone to a lot of testosterone and steroids, you will see in most men, it affects their red blood cell line. Can it be dangerous and lead to stroke and heart attack? There's not many good studies on this, but I'm concerned for it, and you have to consider this, and you have to look at men. So, what are the risks? Being on androgen, race, men that are Caucasian with European ancestry, ancestry have a potential gene uh, mutation on a carrier state, not to mention homozygote state, for hereditary hemochromatosis. We'll get into that in a little bit. Age. Young men on testosterone and steroids in their 20s or less than 30, um, you just don't see it. It's amazing. So as men get older, you see the potential sensitivity to antigens on the red blood cell line. You see it go up. We don't know why. It's very, very interesting. Sleep apnea. The whole drive for, for erythrocytosis and polycythemia and just the process of making red cells which is called erythrocytosis is driven on oxygen saturation something 40,000 years ago probably when we were bleeding and losing blood we need to respond and to produce more red blood cells absolutely incredible you take antigens it affects red blood cells no one fully understands it environmental factors that could lead to this altitude, living at very high elevation, that's why you have the alteration in the red blood cells, where you have the alteration in reference ranges, because people living very, very high in elevation, they're going to have a higher hematocrit and hemoglobin, and that's accounted for. But can it cause symptoms? It can. Even people that are not in androgens, smoking, if you smoke, you're going to see this lowering oxygen cumulatively, and you're going to see potential reflex and erythrocytosis. Diet, potential, high high iron diets, it's been questioned. I don't know, I don't think there's much data for that, but it's possible. Factors, obviously dose and androgen type, steroid type, even testosterone. What can you do? Iron studies and gene studies. So doctors, healthcare providers, patients, you're gonna to wanna to know beyond following the CBC, you look at iron studies, because is it an iron overload condition going on? Iron, TIBC, percent saturation, ferritin. Very complicated. Please feel confident and check this. I've learned this from working conservatively with hematologists all over the world. I feel comfortable. It's man per man. I have to work with other hematologists all over the world depending on what's going on. The gene studies, hereditary, hemochromatosis, polycythemia vera with a JAK2 mutation, NPL mutation analysis, esoteric, but I gotta have it in there for you guys, 
guys who love this stuff, clinically. You're going to look what happens and how do you feel, how does it affect clinically. Plethora, headaches, vision changes. Please, if you have any of this stuff and you're under these reference ranges of 18 and 54, you could certainly be having clinical manifestations. You have to go see a doctor, a hematologist. Again, the risks in the end are going to be specified individually, specified per patient, but it's not a concern for foot toenail fungus. The concern is having a stroke or a heart attack, worsening the other conditions that you may have. It's this multifactorial scenario. Please look into this. Don't just phlebotomize. I have phlebotomy here. I can use it sometimes, but just indiscriminately phlebotomizing and just chasing these numbers is wrong. Please, I'm working on some data with this with other experts in the world. Please be careful. Consider you're on steroids and testosterone. Consider this stuff. Next. CMP. This is it. So this is a basic metabolic panel. We're not going to look at the electrolytes because androgens really don't affect that unless you have some other disease state in your kidney and liver. So everyone worries. Everyone worries when they're on steroids and testosterone and just worries naturally. Do I have kidney disease or liver disease? You're on testosterone and steroids. You got to get a renal assessment. You start, this is an estimation, BUN and creatinine. Creatinine 0.6 to 1.3. If you're up over that, are you an African American man? Do you have a risk for focal segmental glomerular sclerosis? Are you a person that has muscle mass? Is it muscle spillover, doc? Is it really that? My number's naturally up to 1.5 or 1.7. There's nothing wrong, doc. I've always had that. Be careful. Maybe you have. Uh, early uh, kidney disease, please be careful. What other risks are going on here? Hypertension, non-steroidal use. So imagine what I see, man's using steroids for years. He's a power lifter or a bodybuilder. These are amateur guys, right? Forget the pros, those guys are on a lot of drugs and they get really hurt from this stuff and they know that. And that's just what it is, folks. Blood pressure, they have problems. They use a lot of NSAIDs, Motrin and Aleve. Too much protein, say it's an African-American gentleman, and he put it all together for years on steroids. Kidneys get hurt. Please pay attention. Please don't work alone. Work with nephrologists. Work with urologists. I put cystatin C in here because the guys are learning. They come in. They're very, very smart on the Internet. you got to be careful. I don't, I'm not a nephrologist or a urologist. I have to work with these doctors. I'm an internist. Now I'm a testosteronologist. That's internal medicine for men and androgens, testosteronology, cystatin C. It is true that if you have muscle mass, this is going to be potentially not a good estimation for looking at kidney disease if you have muscle, if you're muscle, if you're exercising. Not to mention, if you're, if you're taking some of these other agents like creatine, it's going to cause a problem. Please pay attention to that. So in the end of the day, cystatin C can differentiate that. I have to give this to you guys. I don't feel comfortable working with it because I could usually use the basic assessment here to make a decision that if I don't, I, that the, the man's kidneys are fine, and then if I don't think it's fine, I work with a nephrologist. Next, liver function. Everyone knows oral steroids are going to increase those transaminases. Transaminase elevation is a disease versus muscle spillover or something else. If you have a bilirubin that's normal, again, we see men, up to 10% of Caucasian men have Gilbrays, where you see an, an elevation of total bilirubin that's elevated, usually not more than three milligrams per deciliter. That can be normal. I feel comfortable only man per man, and I have to use GI doctors. I have to use these doctors sometimes. Maybe get a liver ultrasound, we have to be very careful. But again, this is the assessment of the liver and the kidney, hemoglobin A1C. Next, glucose. That's going to be in here too. If you think you have diabetes or prediabetes, usually type 2 diabetes, you're going to look at hemoglobin A1C. I love to watch that. I love to keep those way under 5.7. If you're, if you're between 5.7 and 6.4, it's prediabetes. If you're over 6.4%, you're a type 2 diabetic. I work on this stuff. I put just Tasha on a stick. I pull it in. Guys come in. Boom, I get to work on the basic primary care risk factors, blood pressure, cholesterol, and sugar. Here we go. Next, PSA. Because in the end of the day, guys, it's your heart and your prostate. And, and apart from colon cancer screening, skin cancer screening, 
eyes and the teeth, it's going to be the heart and the prostate. Please pay attention. PSA baseline, it's got to be less than four. Don't go, f if you're less than four, you have no problems with your prostate, you're a young man, you're screening. Testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer. No one can argue it now, but if you have prostate cancer and you take testosterone, it could accelerate an underlying malignancy. Please be careful. Work with doctors, and this is where I would work with a urologist. If you see an acceleration on testosterone, there's a little bit of a bump up in the beginning, and that's acceptable, very minimal. If you see a bump up over an acceleration greater than or equal to 0.35, and you see two or three of those, you have to go see a, 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 a urologist. And again, you have to do it man per man. You have to watch it. So that's PSA, CBC, comprehensive liver function, hemoglobin A1C, diabetes, prediabetes, urinalysis. The urinalysis is looked at when you're considering kidney disease. You want to make sure there's no protein and no blood. Okay, next, lipid panel. This is the heart disease stuff. This is basic stuff right here. Total cholesterol, LDL, triglycerides, and HDL. You want to get advanced. You want to take a look at the advanced lipid panel stuff. Very cool. APO, lipoprotein B, and LP little a. You have to look at risk assessment for coronary artery disease. Do you have family history? Are you over 40? Are you a man? Those are risks. Blood pressure, cholesterol, bad lipids. Please pay attention when you put it on testosterone, not to mention steroids, see the global effects? It affects red cells. It affects the HDL and the LDL. It can certainly affect the comprehensive metabolic panel, you the, the PSA. You have to watch. These are the basics. Please, people. So what I like to give on this for the tips if you have risks and you don't have heart disease already, the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association said if you're an intermediate risk patient, we're talking about men here because that's who I take care of, you're looking at the LDLs, you don't like what you see on paper, get a coronary artery calcium score. You can see if you have early calcified atherosclerotic plaque. It doesn't mean that you don't have soft plaque. It just will give you a marker in determination if you have hardened plaque in the arteries already and you're young, you're, you're going to want to slow down that process. It's such a, it's a basic work. This is basic pathophysiology from primary care medicine, now for men, testosteronology on androgens. Please be careful. This is very complicated, but this is the basis of everything. You can get a calcium score. You can get an echo. You want to see a cardiologist. Use, why should all the rich guys, every single rich guy in this country has a cardiologist and he doesn't have any disease. Why can't you do it? Consider seeing a cardiologist. You have any, you're in a walk-in clinic. You can't get an internist. They're not really there anymore. Go see a cardiologist with or without insurance. If you're not sure, blood pressure, cholesterol, anything you're concerned for. You want to use specialists. You just want to use those specialists. You want to make sure you stay healthy. If you have disease of the heart and the kidney early, it's going to be unnecessary suffering. There it is. CBC, Comprehensive Metabolic Panel, Liver Function, A1C, Urinalysis, PSA, Lipid Panel. There is my assessment. I really hope this helps. Thank you so much.